In this video, we will discuss about the pulmonary artery catheter, also known as Swan-Gans catheter. A Swan-Gans catheter is usually 110 cm in length. A balloon surrounds the tip of the catheter. Catheter is marked at 10 cm increments from the tip, to aid insertion. Usually there are four ports in the PA catheter. First is the proximal infusion port, its lumen terminates 30 cm from the tip of the catheter. This opening lies in the right atrium when the tip is in the pulmonary artery. So this port can monitor right atrial pressures, that is central venous pressure. It can also be used to give fluids and drugs. The second is the distal pulmonary artery port, its lumen terminates at the tip of the catheter. So when in position, this port is used to measure pulmonary artery pressure, and mixed venous saturation. Third is the balloon inflation port. Fourth is the thermistor, its lumen terminates 4 cm proximal to the tip of the catheter. It is used to measure cardiac output using thermodilution technique. The catheter which we are going to see does not have the thermistor. The PA catheter, has to be flushed with saline before the insertion. So when the distal pulmonary artery port is flushed, the saline comes out of the tip of the catheter. Next the proximal infusion port is flushed. One can see the saline coming out of the opening at the 30 cm mark, as discussed earlier. The balloon of the catheter is checked, by inflating 1.5 ml of air using the syringe as shown. The balloon is used to guide the catheter into pulmonary artery, by the balloon flotation technique. The balloon is also used to wedge the pulmonary artery, to measure the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure which is an indirect measurement of left atrial pressure. PA catheter is inserted after placing an introducer sheath in the internal jugular vein. The side port of the introducer sheath can be used for rapid infusion of fluids. Let's open up the heart to see the position of the PA catheter, in relation to the internal anatomy of the heart. Pulmonary artery catheter is then gradually inserted into the sheath. It should be noted that a pressure monitoring transducer is attached to the distal pulmonary artery port, to observe the continuous pressure wave forms. Once catheter is inserted till 20 cm mark, it usually crosses the tip of the insertion sheath, now the balloon of the catheter is inflated with 1.5 ml of air. So now the tip of catheter floats in the blood, and aids in the correct placement of the catheter. The catheter is advanced till the right atrial pressure is obtained in the monitor. In the right atrium, the pressure usually averages less than 5 mm mercury and fluctuates between few millimeters mercury. When pushed further it reaches the right ventricle. The systolic pressure increases to about 25 mm mercury, and diastolic pressure remains same as the right atrial diastole pressure. When the catheter tip reaches the pulmonary artery, the systolic pressure is similar to the right ventricular systolic pressure, but there is increase in the diastolic pressure, to about 10 mm mercury. It is due to the closure of the pulmonary valve during diastole. When the catheter is pushed further into one of the branch pulmonary artery, the balloon wedges, and it measures indirectly the left atrial pressure. The mean pressure is about 10 mm mercury, and the waveform is similar to that of right atrial pressure. Once the wedge trace is obtained, the balloon is deflated, and return of pulmonary artery pressure trace is confirmed. If the PA trace is not obtained, the catheter is withdrawn slightly, till the PA trace appears. Usually the right atrium is entered at 25 cm, the right ventricle at 30 cm, and the pulmonary artery at 40 cm, the wedge pressure can be identified at 45 cm. These are only approximate measurements. Once the procedure is complete, chest x-ray is taken, to check the position of the pulmonary artery catheter. Hope this video was helpful. If it is, please do share it with your friends.